Okay, so today we're going to be on journal 34, and there's no bell work. We're going to go straight into the lesson. Um, and so we've been talking about how to find x-intercepts. In other words, how to find all those zeros um, or what we call solutions uh, for x. And these past few days, I've been giving you a factor along with your polynomial, right? I, gave, I give you a factor where you can use synthetic division, which leads you to confirming if it is a factor and then finding the rest of the factors, setting that equal to zero and solving for x. So the question is today, what if I gave you no factors? I just gave you the function. How would you go about solving for uh, x if I set this equal to zero? Well, we can do this by using this handy formula here. Now you can see here, it's kind of like a fraction. You got a plus or minus in front and this fraction, which on top is the factors of constants, which if we're talking about the factors of the constant, it's referring to, um, let me grab a highlighter. It's referring to this number here, the 10, because that is our constant. It's usually the end number of your function. Um, and then, so I'm going to use pink for this part here. And then when we're talking about the factors of the leading coefficient, leading coefficient is referring to that highest number, I mean, sorry, the highest power and the number in front of it. So that's going to be our five here, right? And so because it's asking for the factors, we need to find the factors of 10 and five. So let's go ahead and set that up and see what we get here. So um, I'm going to use grab a pen. So we have this plus or minus in front, so plus or minus. Got to write my fraction. Um, and so let's think of factors for 10. So what I like to do to figure out my factors is just start with the number 1 and um, go on up until I get to 10. Like um, think about all the integers up to 10. So if I start with 1, 1 divides into 10 right? So I have 1. Does 2 divide into 10? Yes, it does. Does 3 divide into 10? No. Does 4? No. Does 5? Yes. Does 6? No. Does 7? No. Does 8? No. Does 9? No. But 10 does. And so I would stop there. So you want to find all those factors from 1 to that number that divides into that number. So let me do this with um, the leading coefficient. So our leading coefficient is 5, so let's think about it. Does 1 go into 5? Yes. 2 doesn't, 3 doesn't, 4 doesn't, but 5 does. And I would stop. So here's all my factors. And because this is a fraction, I can write this as, um, like, I can divide the numbers, the factors, by the, the factors in the denominator. So I'm going to take the numerator and divide it with the denominator um, and get all the possible real solutions or real zeros here. So in other words, and I have to include that plus or minus. So plus or minus, let's think about, let's start out with using 1 here. So 1 divided by 1 gives you 1. I have a 1 here. Let's try this one with the, the 2. So 2 divided by 1 gives you 2. 5 divided by 1 gives you 5. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the plus or minus in front. My bad. So every time you divide, you should have a plus or minus in front. And so 5 divided by 1 gives you plus or minus 5. 10 divided by 1 gives you plus or minus 10. And so notice that now I've divided all my numbers on the top with my 1. So I'm done with using 1. Now I want to use 5 from my de denominator. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take each number in the top and divide it by 5. So what is that going to look like? Well, 1 divided by 5 is 1 over 5. So I can keep that as a fraction. So plus or minus um, 1 over 5. 2 divided by 5 is plus or minus 2 over 5. 5, well, okay, if I take 5 and I divide it by 5, that's actually just 1. And I already have 1 here. 
So anytime you end up dividing and you get the same number it's already in your list, you don't need to rewrite that. And same thing for the 10, right? So 10 divided by five gives you plus or minus two. And I already have a two here, so I don't need to add that on. So in other words, it looks like I'm done dividing all my numbers. This is my list of possible uh, real zeros. And if you look at here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve possible real zeros. But if you guys remember, um, there's no way I can have this many x intercepts, right? Because the degree of the function is four. So I should really have four. So what this is, this equation allows us to do is find the, all the possible ones, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all of these are the x-intercepts. It just means that in one of these four is going to be the real um, x-intercept. The only, what this allows us to do is to kind of narrow down what they could be and test them out. Because what we're looking at here is all the possible roots that would uh, be for this function. And so we could test out these numbers and see if that's the case. So that's how you find all the possible real solutions. In the next slide here, we're gonna be talking about how we actually determine the uh, x-intercepts and really uh, find the um, exact uh, x-intercepts. So stay tuned.